The Kyoto Protocol does not cover the world's two largest emitters, the United States and China, and therefore cannot work. It's now clear that Kyoto is not the path forward for a global solution to climate change. If anything, it's an impediment. Welcome back to Follow the Money, the climate. Police suffering an epic defeat with Canada being the first nation to pull out of the Kyoto Protocol. So is this the collapse of Al Gore's crusade? Join me now, Weather Trends founder, Bill Kirk. Sir, tell us very quickly for our audience members who might not understand. 1997, Kyoto Protocol tried to get all the nations in the world to agree to a level of carbon emissions, right? Correct. The U.S. said no way because China said no way. First China said no, so yeah. we said no. If they're not going to do it, we're not going to do it. A lot of other countries decided to do it. Why is Canada now, 14 years later, deciding to pull out? Because I think we're seeing, A, we're seeing trends that don't suggest that there really is even global warming. Today, the global temperature is actually one-tenth of one degree C above average, basically statistical average. So you've not seen climate change. You've not seen warming in 13 years. So you're going to have Canada literally would have to take every single car off well, their streets. You're going to stop you one-tenth of one degree uh, Right Above now, the, the Kyoto level is that what you're saying? Current global temperatures one tenth versus one, one in a year, in a month, in two years. Average. So we're all concerned about being a degree or degree and a half above average. It was the goal where we should be today. We're not. We're way below that. We're one tenth of one degree C above average. Statistical average. It's noise. Right. Yet we're going to make billion dollar, trillion dollar decisions over this. You know what I call scientific fraud. Okay. Uh, so, so let's just say all the countries did. China jumped in. The United States jumped in. What are we talking about if we did, in fact, produce or emit more carbon emissions than we agreed to? Well, how much? Give us some dollar cents. Well, I think we can get a good example of Canada. I mean, they, they'd have to take, Canada is roughly the size of the California economy. So Canada would have to take every single car off their streets just to barely meet the new, uh, you know, carbon caps. Um, impossible. So what does that mean for the U.S.? Or we pay would, massive fines. Billions of dollars, $14 billion. You know, it'd be massive fines for, for what? Um, and still not reduce carbon. So that, that becomes the, you know, the hot topic here is that, you know, how much carbon's enough? Because we've had a lot of carbon in the last 13 years, and the planet's gotten colder because the Pacific Ocean's gotten colder. So it's really just, again, based on bad science, unfortunately. This is a political agenda, not a scientific debate. Okay, so what do we do here? What, what, does Kyoto, Canada pulls out of Kyoto. By the way, were, were all countries um, compliant? Were all the other countries that signed Kyoto, were they, were they complying with their levels? No, no, not at all. Um, no, I think what you're going to see now is, you know, the other countries that are going to be, could be, you know, well, Canada's out, Russia will be out. You know, they, they, they weren't supportive to begin with. So I think you'll lose other countries. And eventually there's, it's, again, it's built off bad science. There's too many, too many out, data out there that suggest otherwise that this is, you know, we're making catastrophic well, the, you know, the, decisions. What, I, and I, I'm sorry I don't have the, the screen, but we bring it up every time we talk about the climate change or global warming. Um, in the 70s, the Newsweek article that said the, the, the impending or the imminent um, ice age that was coming because we were actually cooling as a planet, right? And we are today. That's a 19, it's a 30-year Pacific Ocean cycle. It goes through cold phases and warm phases. From 1950 to 1976, the Pacific Ocean was cold, global cooling. 76 to 06, it was warm, global warming. 06, the current, rapid global cooling. So you're seeing the signs of really what's going on in the Pacific Ocean. And that brings down the whole debate. Is it about this ocean cycle that's natural, or is it about carbon in the air? It, it really doesn't prove to be that it's carbon in the air. It's not having an impact. 